Hello, welcome everyone. Uh, sorry for the delayed start. The technical session got uh, extended by some time and then the studio had to revamp everything. So, Happy New Year to all of you. So, uh, wishing you a great year ahead. Whatever campus drive or job mela you go for, I wish you success and a lot of uh, happiness and prosperity. So let's begin. Uh, I want to start with the report for uh, 30th and 31st uh, December as far as the assessments are concerned. The numbers are low considerably, uh, primarily because of the holiday season, which I understand. So today onwards, I expect a lot more people to take these assessments very seriously. The drive dates will be announced very soon, so please start paying attention. So 30th and 31st, two days put together, total of 53 assessments were taken out of which 40 were valid and 13 were invalid. Out of these, 33 were for aptitude and 7 were for verbal. So if you look at the overall percentage of invalid assessments, it's still pretty high. Uh, let me get you the figures. All right. So it's like 25% uh, of the assessments are actually invalid. Uh, so you really, really need to work hard and make sure that you're not missing out on submission of uh, assessments. So almost 25%. So imagine 25% of the assessments were not even submitted, which is not a very good thing. All right, so let's look at uh, the student count. Uh, for both the days put together. So the total number of valid assessments is uh, 40. So these 40 assessments were spread across number of students. So let's take a look at that now. So 17 assessments were taken by Sunanda from Pragati Degree College, followed by 5 assessments by Malika, then Radha 5 assessments, uh, Jyotsna Devi 2 assessment and remaining students taking 1 assessment each. So total number of students who participated is 14 and majority of it has been taken by Sunanda. So if I have to look at the number of valid assessments, which is 40. So almost 42% of the assessments were by just 1%. So the numbers are a uh, little disappointing as far as the, the assessments are concerned. So please do pay attention. I'm going to quickly take you through how to take the assessment. So once you log in into the screen, click on assessments. I'm doing this on daily basis so that you understand and you don't make a mistake. We have extended the last date to 31st of December 2017, which means you can retake these assessments once again. So I'm going to the first one, aptitude 30 questions, 40 minutes, and I start. Once you start, if you are sure of the answer, pick the answer and say save and next. If you are not sure, you can still pick and say mark for review and next. And if you want to skip, please do click on skip. If you click on skip, the tile will note the information. Okay. So I have skipped question number three. That's why it's gray. It's yellow because I'm at the current question. So I can go back to the blue tile question number two. I can say save and next. And question three, I can pick my answer and say save and next. Now I have answered four questions. Once I'm done with all of these, I got to go to the end of the screen. Obviously, question number 30, once I finish, and I click on submit assessment and click on OK. Once I get this message, it means my score has been recorded in the scorebook. 
I go to the score book. I see lot of listing here with lot of page numbers. So ignore all that. Come on top on this particular field on this row. Just double click and it will pick the latest one. It will become descending order backward. Okay. So first of sorry, second of January 1559, which is 450, uh, 359. I, I have scored only one. It's because of this summary. So my assessment is aptitude one. I have spent only one minute. Total marks assigned is 30. I have scored only one. I have answered five out of five. One is correct, four is incorrect. 25 questions were unattempted. Okay. Now I can go to individual question and see which one is correct and which one is incorrect. If it's not attempted, obviously it will show up here. So this is pretty self-explanatory and I'm doing this on a daily basis. All right. Uh, let me take you through the important aspect of uh, the Infosys pattern, which you are supposed to know. Infosys dates will be announced very soon. In a day or two, you will get to know the dates. Uh, please be in touch with your placement cell because they will also get the notification from APSSDC. As soon as I get to know the information about the location, district, which city and what date, I will certainly inform you. All right. So uh, first step that you will have in terms of the selection process for Infosys is your written test where you will have analytical and verbal ability. Analytical, you will have 30 questions that needs to be answered in 40 minutes. You will have questions from quantitative aptitude and reasoning. Verbal, you will have 40 questions that needs to be answered in 30 minutes. You will have passage, theme detection. Let's look, take a look at it. Now, analytical, quantitative aptitude and reasoning will come from these nine areas. Data interpretation, syllogism, data sufficiency, problems on trains, time and work, permutation and combinations, number series, coding and decoding, and puzzles. Verbal ability, you will have questions from critical reasoning and theme detection, fill in the blanks, sentence correction, and reading comprehension. You may or may not, but most likely you may get two paragraphs, but each paragraph will have only five questions each. <laughs> that needs to be answered within the stipulated time. All right. Now I'm going to uh, take you through a little bit of recap of these areas. First, I will start with theme detection today and I will tell you how to ensure you get it right. Okay. So when we talk about theme detection, what exactly are we saying is you will get a passage. You need to read the passage. And you need to understand the inner meaning of the passage. There would be certain lines mentioned in the passage, but the meaning may not be a literal one. There would be certain uh, text or phrases that will be mentioned. You need to be careful not to pick the literal meaning and when to pick the literal meaning. Say, for example, uh, if I make a statement that whatever the students, uh, or sorry, uh, if I make a statement that uh, the train uh, it, the train is the train is traveling so fast it's like flying it doesn't mean the train is flying like an aeroplane it just means that it's going very fast so you cannot take the literal meaning of what is mentioned on the uh, on the on the passage so the the instruction for theme detection will be fairly simple and straightforward it will say each of the following questions contain a small paragraph followed by a question on it read each paragraph carefully and answer the question given below it. So it will say each of the following question contains a small paragraph. No, I'm reading the slide. So let's have the slide. <clears throat> small paragraph followed by a question on it. Read each paragraph carefully and answer the question below it. So you will have a passage which will look something like this. Very short passage. Underneath that, you will have the question. You need to understand the inner meaning of the passage, understand the theme of it so that you can answer the questions. All right. Let's take a few examples. The attainment of individual and organizational goal is mutually interdependent and linked by a common denominator, employee work motivation. 
Organizational members are motivated to satisfy their personal goals and they contribute their efforts to the attainment of organizational objectives as means of achieving these personal goals. What it basically means is, how does an employee get satisfaction? How does an employee get motivation? An employee joins an organization to improve himself. That is first priority. The second priority is how he or she contributes to the organization. So every employee has certain personal aspirations, personal goals. Once they are able to meet these personal goals, only then they can get motivated and contribute to the organization goals. If they are not happy about their personal goals, obviously they will not be motivated and the work will take a hit. It will impact the work delivery and execution and obviously the organization will also suffer. Now when I say or when I talk about personal goals, I don't mean that I join an organization and my personal goal is to buy a car. No. Your personal goal should be in sync with the organization's goal. Say for example, I am joining as, uh, as, as a junior accountant. My personal goal is within six months, I want to learn a particular accounting practice. That's my personal goal. Now, how is the organization getting the benefit? If I learn a certain international standard of accounting practice, obviously I can work better, I can work for a different client within the organization and the skill set of me as well as the organization goes up. If I'm not able to do that, I won't be able to be motivated and obviously my work will take a hit. All right. So let's read the passage. You will understand this better now. The attainment of individual and organizational goal is mutually interdependent and linked by a common denominator, which is employee work motivation. Organizational members are motivated to satisfy their personal goals and they contribute to their efforts to the attainment of organizational objectives as means of achieving these personal goals. The question is, the passage best supports the statement that motivation encourages an individual to give priority to personal goal and over organizational goals. Motivation is crucial for survival of an individual and organization. It's a product of an individual's physical and mental energy, is an external force which induces an individual to contribute his efforts makes organization and society inseparable. In the context of this paragraph only you need to answer. You cannot look at a universal phenomena or universal rule. In context of this particular passage, what does motivation mean? So motivation means encourages an individual to give priority to personal goals over organizational goals. All right. Next, due to enormous profits involved in smuggling, Hundreds of persons have been attracted towards this anti-national activity. Some of them became millionaires overnight. India has a vast coastline, both on the eastern and western coast. It has been a heaven for smugglers who have been carrying on their activities with great impunity. There is no doubt that from time to time certain seizures were made by enforcement authorities during raids and ambush, but even allowing these losses, the smugglers made huge profits. So it basically talks about the smuggling problem. India has a very vast coastline. The coastline starts from West Bengal, comes towards Orissa, then Tamil Nadu, sorry, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, then goes all the way to the tip, Kerala, then it touches uh, Karnataka, then Maharashtra, goes up till Goa and upward Gujarat as well. Which means 50% of our entire country, the bottom part has coastline. Such a huge coastline needs huge security. Obviously, you cannot put Coast Guard across the coastline. So this passage is talking about the act of smuggling, which is anti-national. It's anti-national because it creates security problem. The 2611 Mumbai attack had happened because of uh, smuggling of arms, right? So it basically says that smugglers who are very smart, even if they are getting caught, by enforcement uh, authorities, by Coast Guard, they're still making a lot of money because probably out of 100 operations by the smugglers, only two or three get caught and they really don't lose money. So it's basically highlighting the problem of smuggling 
especially in the coastal area because it's so vast it's very difficult to monitor all right so let's read this again so that you understand this better due to enormous profits involved in smuggling hundreds of persons have been attracted towards this anti-national activity some of them became millionaires overnight india has a vast coastline both on the eastern and western coast it has been a heaven for smugglers who have been carrying on their activities with great impunity there is no doubt that from time to time certain seizures were made by the enforcement authorities during raids and ambush but even allowing these losses the smugglers made huge profits so this particular word impunity means fearless nothing will happen to them the passage best supports the statement that smuggling hampers the economic development of a nation smuggling ought to be curbed curb means stopped authorities are taking strict measures to curb smuggling smuggling is fast increasing in our country owing to the quick profit it entails so here we are talking about people making million million dollar or million rupees overnight that's why d is a correct answer so basically you need to understand the entire passage what exactly it is saying and then pick the answer next though the waste of time or the expenditure on fashions is very large yet fashions have come to stay they will not go come what may however what is not required is that strong effort should be made to displace the excessive craze for fashion from the minds of these youngsters it basically says in terms of fashion in terms of clothes it changes time to time but it's always there and it keeps changing but the problem is the young people they need to focus on the right thing instead of spending a lot of money on fashion they need to understand what is a priority okay so let's read this again though the waste of time or the expenditure on fashions is very large yet fashions have come to stay they will not go come what may however what is not required is that strong efforts should be made to displace the excessive craze for fashion from the minds of these youngsters the passage best supports the statement that fashion is the need of the day the excessive craze of for fashion is detrimental to one's personality the hoard of the hoard for fashion should be done away with so as to not let down the constructive development work and other activities should be valued more than the outward appearance so here the correct answer is c not b don't get confused it says constructive development the reason c is the correct answer because if you read the last part of the sentence the last sentence however what is now required is that strong effort should be made to displace the excessive craze of fashion from the minds of these youngsters so youngsters instead of focusing on overall constructive development they are focusing on fashion next question one of the important humanitarian by product of technology is the greater dignity and value that it imparts to human labor in a highly industrialized society there is no essential difference between brahmin and dalit muslim and hindu they are equally useful and hence equally valuable for in the industrial society individual productivity fixes the size of the paycheck and this fixes social status the first line says one of the important humanitarian by product of technology is the greater dignity and value that it imparts in human labor because of technology today what is happening is our work standard has improved our skills have improved and something very important that it has done it has brought dignity what do we mean by dignity dignity means respect the other day i met uh, an uber driver uh, who used to work in a restaurant uh, and he used to clean table so people used to come and abuse him asking him to come on clean the table and they used to speak very rudely to them they were very harsh he learned driving and he learned how to use a smartphone so today he is an uber driver and he tells me that the kind of respect that he gets now he never got that in the past he is using technology he has improved on his skill now nobody will question him what is his religion or what is his caste so basically it says is technology has made a difference in terms of the labor force by giving them the respect giving them the dignity where the religion the caste creed does not really matter 
द स्टेटस ऑफ अ पर्सन मैटर्स ऑन वॉट ही डज इट्स इन इज हैंड इफ ही वर्क वेल इफ ही अर्न वेल ऑब्वियसली पीपल रेस्पेक्ट सो बिकॉज ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी बिकॉज ऑफ स्किल वॉट मैटर्स इज योर वैल्यू इन टर्म्स ऑफ योर आउटपुट नॉट इन टर्म्स ऑफ योर रिलीजन और कास्ट और राइट लेट्स रीड दिस अगेन सो दैट यू अंडरस्टैंड दिस क्लियरली one of the important humanitarian by products of the technology is the greater dignity and value that it imparts to human labor in a highly industrialized society there is no essential difference between brahmin and dalit muslim and hindu they are equally useful and hence equally valuable for in the industrial society individual productivity fixes the size of paycheck and this fixes social status the passage best supports the statement that technology decides individual social, social status castes and religions are man made human labor has dignity and value all individuals irrespective of caste and creed are born equal industrial society is a great leveler of men leveler means everything is level equal hence we will pick c as the answer which means human labor has dignity and value if people work they get money if they get money they get respect they have value all right moving on to the next one the future of women in india is quite bright and let us hope that they will justify their abilities by rising to the occasion napoleon was right when he declared that by educating the women we can educate the whole nation because a country can never rise without the contribution of 50% of their population it basically talking about the role of women if you educate them if you empower them they will contribute to the development of the country the passage best supports the statement that india is striving hard for the emancipation of women all women should be well educated a nation can progress only when women are given equal rights and opportunities as men women ought to be imparted full freedom to prove their worth and contribute to the progress of the nation so i'm going to read the points again india is striving hard for the emancipation of women all women should be well educated a nation can progress only when women are given equal rights and opportunity as men women ought to be imparted full freedom to prove their worth and contribute to the progress of the nation and the correct answer is of course the last one women ought to be imparted full freedom and prove their worth and contribute to the progress of the nation all right let's look at one more example then i will pick another uh, another module the prevention of accidents makes it necessary not only that safety devices be used to guard exposed machinery but also that mechanics be instructed in safety rules which they must follow for their own protection and the lighting in the plant be adequate it's talking about a factory setup it says accidents can be prevented if all safety precautions are taken people who work in factories they are supposed to wear helmets they are supposed to wear gloves they supposed to wear glasses so i have seen a uh, lot of a uh, uh, lot of uh, incidents within big city like hyderabad itself where i have seen welders uh, welding on on a on a fabrication shop where they are not actually wearing the glasses now those splinters of sparks if it hits the eye the person can go blind i have seen men working in construction site they are 50 foot up on the terrace uh, putting a cement wall and people just fall and they die because these contractors don't pay attention to safety they don't really care even the laborers don't care they just want their money because they have to invest in safety equipment so they don't really care but it says to prevent these accidents prevent these mishaps they should give adequate uh, attention and concentration on safety devices especially in factory area in case if the if the place is not uh, brightly lit in case if there is little dark spot obviously you can't see and you can get injured okay so i'll repeat reading it again so that you understand the prevention of accidents make it necessary not only that safety devices be used to guard exposed machinery 
sorry, but also that mechanics be instructed in safety rules which they must follow for their own protection and that lighting in the plant be adequate. The passage best supports the statement that industrial accidents are always avoidable. Industrial accidents may be due to ignorance. Industrial accidents cannot be entirely overcome. Industrial accidents can be eliminated with the help of safety rules. Industry, industrial uh, accidents usually result from inadequate machinery. So, of course, D is the answer. It can be completely eliminated in case if there are adequate safety rules. Okay. So, theme detection, you will get a passage like this. You will have a set of questions and you need to find which particular statement supports that particular paragraph. Okay. All right. Let us move on uh, to fill in the blanks. Now, fill in the blanks could be uh, questions like this where you are supposed to pick one word. Uh, basically, you are you will get questions like these, for example, one who dabbles in the fine art. So, these are the kind of question that you will get. You will have one complete line and you need to find one word which is the meaning. So, what is the meaning of the word amateur? Amateur is a person who dabbles in fine arts for the love of it and not for monetary gains. So basically here it will test your skills in terms of your vocabulary. So these are the kind of questions you will get. You may also get sentence correction. Now sentence correction you will get questions like these where you will have one or two words which will be underlined and that has to be replaced with one of the option. Now it is quite possible that there is no mistake. If there is no mistake obviously you will pick no correction required. All right. Let us look at certain examples. He never has and ever will take such strong measures. He never has and ever will take such strong measures. Is it grammatically correct? Maybe not. Let us look at the options. He never had taken nor will ever take such strong measures. He never had taken and will ever take such strong measures. He never has and never will take such strong measures. Option D, he never had and ever will take such strong measures. No correction required. Of course, the first one is the correct answer. He never had taken nor will ever take such strong measures. Here you need to have good grammatical skills, grammar knowledge to improve the sentence in case <coughs> there is a mistake. Technology must use to feed the forces of change. No, it should, technology must be used. So, I am using the technology to change things. Okay. Anyone interested in the use of computers can learn much if you have access to a personal computer. My entire sentence starts with anyone, which means it is a third person. I cannot use a second person you here. I need to improve. So, I will use he or she. Anyone interested in the use of computers can learn much if he or she has access to a personal computer. All right. Next one. They are not beware of all facts. When I say they, I am using a third person here, which means I cannot use the beware. I need to use aware. Beware I use when I am telling someone else. Please beware of all the problems. Okay. So, they are not aware of, you cannot say aware for, it has to be aware of all the facts. Next one, we cannot always convey ourselves in simple sentences. Now, you do not convey yourself in a sentence, you express yourself. So, you cannot always express ourselves in simple sentences. So, these are combination words, you need to understand what what context it is used and what kind of words you need to use when you are writing a sentence. All right. Let us look at uh, another example. As there was no time, the remaining items were deferred into the next meeting. Now, you cannot defer into something, you always defer till. And another thing, it says as there was no time means it is a past tense. So, I need to continue with the past tense. 
as there was no time the remaining items were deferred till the next meeting okay so these are some uh, examples where you are making a sentence correction you will be given a particular sentence some part of it may have an error and you need to pick what is the right one now there could be questions on sentence improvement as well you will be given a sentence and you need to see if it can be improved basically you will get a question stem which is mentioned in the red font and it has to be continued with the appropriate option not all the options will be logical not all the options will be grammatically correct so you need to pick the logic logical sequence as well as grammatical accuracy the the instructions will be something like this in each question an incomplete statement stem followed by fillers is given pick out the best one which can complete incomplete stem correctly and meaningfully means it has to have a logical conclusion it has to be grammatically accurate let's look at the example it is not easy to remain tranquil tranquil means peaceful it's not easy to remain tranquil when those around you behave in a socially acceptable manner now can i say option a is the answer no it says it cannot be easy to remain peaceful when people are behaving socially socially acceptable manner if if they are behaving in a socially acceptable manner obviously there will be peace right but the question stem says it's not easy to be peaceful that means something is wrong now let's look at the option it is not easy to remain tranquil when those around you behave in a socially acceptable manner exhibit pleasant mannerism now if they are pleasant obviously there will be peace when uh, around are losing their heads losing their head means going crazy going mad agree to whatever you say option d is agree to whatever you say now if they agree to whatever you say obviously there will be peace option e exhibit generous and magnanimous gestures if people are being nice and generous obviously there will be peace which means logically only one option fits here which is option c which is are losing their heads now let's continue it's not easy to remain tranquil when those around you are losing their heads it does not mean literally the head is getting lost it means they're going mad going crazy all right next the food in this hotel is no match to what were forced at late hours in hotel kohinoor what does it mean means this food is no match you cannot even match this food to the late night food served in hotel kohinoor basically if i say if i say for example i have this device and i say this device has lot of features and it's 1 plus 1 and i say this phone is nothing in front of iphone 6 means this phone is inferior iphone 6 is superior okay when you say nothing that means in comparison it's lower let's look at the slide again the food in this hotel is no match to what were forced at late hours in hotel kohinoor means the food in this hotel is quite good compared to what we ate at kohinoor hotel kohinoor served us good quality food than what we get here both hotels have maintained good quality of food both hotels serve poor quality of food it is better to eat food than remain hungry option e is absolutely invalid so if i say this food is no match means hotel kohinoor is better so option b hotel kohinoor served us good quality food than what we get here next although initial investigations pointed towards him means we are talking about a person initial investigation pointed towards him, him means he is the culprit he is the criminal okay pointed means you are pointing finger so here it's a contrarian view even though initial uh, investigation pointed towards him that he is the criminal but the evidence probably proved something else so let's look at the option although initial investigations pointed towards him the preceding events means what happened later the preceding events corroborated his involvement corroborated means matched it confirmed but here i'm using a contrarian view opposite view the additional information confirmed his guilt 
the subsequent events establish that he was guilty the subsequent events prove that he was innocent he gave an open confession of his crime so obviously d is the answer although initial investigation pointed towards him that he is a criminal the subsequent events prove that he was innocent all right let's look at one more example the weather outside was extremely pleasant and hence we decided to utilize our time in watching the television now you watch television inside but the weather is pleasant outside so obviously you want to go out option a is invalid refrain from going out for a morning walk enjoy a morning ride in the open employ this rare opportunity for writing letters obviously a letter you will write sitting inside remain seated in our room in the bungalow if the weather outside is pleasant obviously you want to go out so you say enjoy a morning ride in the open <coughs> next it is an uphill task but you will have to do it uphill task means it's a very tiring job it will take time it will take lot of efforts it is an uphill task that you but, sorry it, it is an uphill task but you will have to do it means the work is above the hill and you will have to do it it is very easy task but you must do it it is a very difficult task but you have to do it this work is not reserved for you but you will have to do it it is almost impossible for others but you can do it now uphill means when you climb a hill you get very tired it takes lot of time and effort that's why we'll say it is very difficult task but you have to do it so questions like these you will be given a sentence you need to complete the sentence with the right option all right so that's about in terms of sentence improvement you may now let's look at one uh, example of spotting errors okay now what what is spotting errors let me quickly get you some relevant information okay spotting errors means you will be given four sentences in four options but actually it's a part of just one sentence so one sentence is broken into four parts one part of the sentence will have an error or none of them will have an error you need to spot which part of the sentence has the error the instruction will be something like this read the each sentence to find out whether there is there is any grammatical error in it the error if any will be in one part of the sentence the letter on the part is the answer if there is no error answer is d which means ignore the errors of the punctuation in if any so you will get a question like this this is just one sentence we discussed about the problem so thoroughly on the eve of the examination that i found it very easy to work it out it just one sentence but one part of the sentence has an error that error is either on a b or c if you think grammatically this whole sentence is accurate you will obviously pick option d so let's look at it we discussed about the problem so thoroughly on the eve of the examination that i found it very easy to work it out so the option is option a we discuss about the problem thoroughly the so is not required okay we discussed about the problem thoroughly on the eve of examination that i found it very easy to work on work it out the reason i won't use so because it's an indian way of talking uh, for example we say the movie is so nice it's not so nice the movie is nice you cannot add a so there all right let's move the next question an indian ship laden with merchandise got drowned in the pacific ocean an indian ship laden with merchandise got drowned in the pacific ocean merchandise means all the load stock now you don't have to use the got form here you can just say an indian ship laden with merchandise drowned in the pacific ocean got is not required it's a redundancy if i had known this yesterday i will have helped him very easy to spot the error if i say if i had known means past tense another hint past tense yesterday if i am talking about past tense how can i use will will is tomorrow future tense 
which means my problem is in option C. The correct form will be if I had known this yesterday, I would have helped him. Okay. Next, a lot of travel delay is caused due to the inefficiency and lack of good management on behalf of the railways. A lot of travel delay is caused due to inefficiency and lack of good management, slide please, on behalf of the railways. Now you cannot say on behalf of the railways, nobody is do representing or as a proxy and causing problem, it is on part of the railways, that is why I will say option C. A lot of travel delays caused due to the inefficiency and lack of good management on part of the railways. The railways is responsible, nobody is doing it on their behalf. Okay. I have got my MSc degree in 1990, sorry 1988. I have got my MSc degree in 1988. We usually make this mistake, I have is not required. I can directly say I got my MSc degree in 1988. Clear? Next question. Having received your letter this morning, we were writing to thank you for the same. Having received your letter this morning, we are writing the, I'm, I repeat, having received your letter this morning, we are writing to thank you for the same. Now the letter have been received in the morning and now we are writing. So obviously there is no tense problem here, it is absolutely perfect. Okay? So when you talk about the sentence uh, improvement, you will have certain text, certain phrases which may be incorrect, you need to, uh, we need to improve that with the correct option. Spotting errors means one of the statement stem will have a problem, you need to identify which particular stem has a problem. Okay? Now let us look at the passage comprehension. <coughs> this will be slightly challenging, but it is not impossible. So when it comes to passage comprehension, we all know how passage comprehension work you will get a passage like this, it could be a small passage or it could be a large passage like this. But whenever you get a passage like this, underline or make a note of important information. What information will you make note of? Here is the information. Underline the key information in terms of dates, years, numbers, persons, incidents. In case if it is talking about any personality, any event make a note of that. But sometimes what happens, it will not be very clear cut. The other day I was giving an example. For example, it says uh, uh, David was born or, or Jonathan was born in the year 1980. At the age of 6, he started uh, painting without any training, without any formal coaching. The passage is written like this and then uh, it says, in 1993, uh, he, uh, uh, Jonathan earned $1 million when he sold one of his best painting. So 1980 he is born, when he was 6 years old, he started painting on his own. In 1993, he earned $1 million when he sold his painting. Now the question in the passage could be, in which year did he start painting on his own? So the year of birth is 1980, 6 years, 1986, you need to understand. So obviously you can just do a quick calculation and find the right answer. Then you will have a question, at what age did he earn $1 million? So born in 1980, he earned in 1993, he was 13 years old. So these kind of questions will also be there, where the answer is not really straightforward, but you need to analyze a little bit. The best way to approach a passage is, either you read the entire passage and then read the questions, or read the first question, then read the passage, answer the first question. When you go to second question, you will know where the information is in the passage. Okay? So for last one month, I had been talking uh, pretty much about Infosys Verbal Ability, where I have covered how to make use of the assessment tool for mock assessment. I had been explaining how the pattern is. Uh, I had been taking you through the entire written assessment practice, explaining the concept and lot of practice we have done over last one month plus. Uh, the dates are yet to be announced. The moment the dates are announced, I will do a recap on body language and interviews again. 
so, but please do pay attention to the mock uh, assessment go back and take as many assessments as possible and if you have specific question or specific uh, doubts in terms of verbal ability please do call and ask questions i'll be very happy to answer them all right so you have a great evening uh, please do practice as much as possible like i told you and i'll see you tomorrow thank you so much